Hello, and thanks for checking out ChartGuys.com. We're proud to be one of the most successful technical analysis communities online, teaching you the skills to become a more confident, effective, and informed trader. Join our community of hundreds of analysts worldwide working together to learn the charts, generate profit, and achieve financial independence. For access to daily live chart analysis and market coverage, a thriving chat community, along with dozens of hours of exclusive educational materials. We look forward to seeing you. Let's check out some charts. Hey everyone, checking in on the market. So things settling down a bit after the wild volatility of Friday. And we could tell very early on that a daily inside bar was likely. And being able to anticipate daily inside bars is important because it can tell you a number of things. Number one, when we have daily inside bars, generally we have limited opportunity. Tightening ranges are not when we want to go aggressive. We want to go aggressive on breaks of tightening ranges as the gold two-year monthly equilibrium breaking showed us. And number two, it tells us that the shorter term timeframes, if we have a daily inside bar forming, the shorter term timeframes get choppy. And you'll see that if you compare the five minute timeframes on a daily inside bar day to days that are not daily inside bars, you will find that there is a lot more chop and a lot more back and forth on the names that have tightening ranges. We did see a little bull surge at the end of the day on pretty big volume to ensure a close at the high of the day. But this is one of those scenarios where looking at the extended hours action, let us know the most likely scenario. So we headed into this morning, and this is ES, just for continuity and, and clarity. We were looking for a lower high to be set on the hourly time frame at the high of the bounce. So we headed into this morning saying, I'm only looking bearish on SPY in the first hour of trading because we're looking for that hourly lower high to form. Let's go back to SPY. That being said, we also could say, the odds that we hold the low of Friday after that are also high, due to the size of the bounce that we saw. So we saw a bounce, we set the, the hourly lower high in pre-market, the bell rang, we didn't break the high of pre-market, and then we broke the low of pre-market and pulled back. From there, the five minute trend changing back to the bulls is the first indication the hourly higher low has been set. Well, the first time we changed the five minute trend right here with this little higher low and higher high, that was the indication that the hourly higher low had been set. So we are anticipating a tightening daily range. It played out that way. And now how this daily inside bar breaks tomorrow is going to dictate whether we're looking at the high of Friday or the low of Friday. And where we closed is just below the midway point of this entire range of August between the low of the dump and the high of the bounce. So we could very easily stay within this tightening range on SPY all week. We have four more trading days. That's a lot of range. I'm looking down at 283.47 and up to 293. 93, that's over a $10 range. We could easily trade within that tightening range for the next four days. Of course, any tweets or any news could change that fact. And Trump was on the podium today giving a press conference, had a little bit of volatility when he was talking, but overall anticipating that we're gonna trade in this tightening range for at least a few more days. And if we're going to break it, it's gonna have to see a more than average volume spike, certainly like we saw on Friday. IWM. Daily inside bar closed up near the high of the day. 144.79 is support. That just barely held, but it did hold. And looking at the hourly time frame, 147.70, pretty much the high of pre-market is going to be short-term resistance levels for these different sectors and markets. And if they break, then we look to Friday levels. So we'll have to see where we start tomorrow to dictate whether it's more likely that we see a bull break or a bear break of the daily inside bars that form today. QQQ, same thing. Daily inside bar, we have a beautiful equilibrium with a higher low down at 181.56. And we'll see which direction we break tomorrow. XLF, daily inside bar. Anything on the daily under 26.85 is just a lower high. And this is one of the more clear lower high patterns where every bounce is just a lower high. And until the bulls can change that pattern, the bears will have complete control. XLV, daily inside bar. Everybody's doing the same thing. Correlations pick up significantly after large volatility. And that's where we stand. XBI, daily inside bar. Look at the range on XBI. We had a 10 minute range dictate the range of the day. And then we traded within that range for the next bunch of hours. This right here was a three hour span of a 41 cent range after we traded about a dollar and 12 in the first 10 minutes of trading. When you see that kind of volatility to start the morning, you anticipate equilibrium. So again, the S&P 500 dumped to start August and we're looking for an equilibrium and we have it on the daily time frame for the last three weeks after the volatility spike. 
Look at this volatility spike on XBI. All out dump and then big bounce. As soon as I saw the size of this bounce on the two minute time frame, I was able to say the equilibrium is the most likely pattern here because of the amount of space created within this range. So we then pulled back and formed a higher low, lower high, higher low, double top, bear break, but the low of the day held. But the bottom line is being able to recognize when equilibriums are most likely is a huge advantage as a trader, not only to play within them. We looked at a top fishing play on this bounce. We said, look for a lower high because the odds that we're going to V-shape to a new high of the day after that big of a drop is very unlikely. So you can play within the equilibrium. You can know to sit on your hands and wait to play the break of the equilibrium. And you can know to not be too aggressive when tightening ranges are forming because that's a great way to lose money. If you're trading aggressive in a highly volatile environment and it's going really well and you trade with that same aggressiveness when the volatile environment evaporates and it starts to condense, you're going to get back a lot of profit. So write that down. Goal. Get better at anticipating equilibriums on all time frames because this is the most common pattern in stocks. Every time frame, every sector, every commodity, every stock sees these equilibriums take place. And honestly, I've got a picture that I got to upload because this goes beyond stocks. It's very superficial on stocks, but I just watched the same thing happen with my weather forecast. The temperature, the high and the low temperature shrunk, shrunk, shrunk for three days and this Wednesday, it's about to expand with a lower low and a higher high and a big spike in volatility. So it's the universe. I don't know how deep it goes, but it's deeper than the stock market. I'll post that picture. VIX, anything under 2410 is just a lower high. And we're looking back down at 1550, anticipating the 1550 is going to hold. The question is, can the bulls break this lower high pattern, hold the low, break the lower highs, that would be a scenario where we would see the August lows breaking in the S&P 500 if that were going to play out. Gold, big upper wick of profit taking. So this is more of a pullback than the bulls would like to see. And you look at it on the four hour chart or actually just the hourly here. Look at the consolidation before the breakout Sunday. That was 1525 and we broke that level just barely, but it was still a break. So we gave back the entire move. And at this point, I'm watching the four hour time frame, and I'm watching the dollar. The dollar's due for an equilibrium just like SPY, because of the wild volatility. Look at this four-hour chart. <clears throat> Absolutely expecting a four-hour lower high and then a higher low. So if that happens and we get a gold or a dollar four-hour lower high and pull back, we'll look for gold to potentially set its four-hour higher low at this base of 1525 that is trying to be built. Look at how well silver is holding up. So this is four-hour consolidation on gold. This is four-hour consolidation on silver. It's night and day. Silver, I'd be watching this equilibrium and I actually like it better on the two hour chart. Nope, three hour chart. High, low of the pullback, lower high. Again, just equilibriums everywhere. 1776, we topped out at 1774. And if we see this little bear break of 1760, then we're going to be looking for the pullback and a higher low compared to 1750 to remain in this tightening range. But what this did with silver consolidating so much more bullish than gold is it's broken our tight range bearish on XAU, XAG, which means silver is stronger than gold. A very clear bear break, a spike in bear volume after a tight range. And now it's up to the bulls to just hold the weekly low of 85.63. And if we do, we'll have a weekly tightening range. If we don't break that level, it is a new downtrend where silver is going to gain a lot of ground on gold. So that's an important support level to be watching, but very notable today due to consolidation. And again, when you're looking at this chart, it doesn't necessarily mean silver's going up more than gold. This chart in this instance means silver went down less than gold. So it gained in strength. Miners have to be cautious of a double top. Here's the two-day time frame here. So tightening range on silver. Here's NUGT. High of 41.90, low of 32.51, lower high of 41.29 now. If we break the low of today, tomorrow, the odds of that two-day equilibrium continuing to play out will remain likely. And there's also a possibility of a cup and handle pattern on some of the longer term timeframes to be watching as well. So a double top, if we see healthy consolidation and then a bull break, that'll be notable. But as of right now, the bulls do have to be cautious of the double top on NUGT. Let's see if JNUG has one as well. 
Not quite that close. Didn't even actually get anywhere near it. 10, 11% below the resistance on JNUG, whereas NUGT was right below it. Oil, still weak. 50.51 is the only support level I care about. If we see a bounce for a daily lower high, the bears can be looking for an entry. I generally wait for the break of an equilibrium, but if I were confident a bear break were going to occur, I would look to make a bearish entry looking for a lower high compared to 57.11. But at this point, I personally am just watching for the broader weekly pattern that we've been waiting on for months. Natural gas is getting interesting, about to break or test daily resistance. Anything under 224 is a daily lower high, and we're right at that resistance level right now. I would love to see a four-hour pullback for a higher low to form. If we break 224 on this move, it's too extended on the four-hour chart for me to be interested in a bullish entry. If we consolidate for a four-hour higher low first, and maybe even a bull flag for a cup and handle pattern, then I would be interested in a potential entry. A consolidation and then a breakout. So we'll see if we get it. Going to be picky here because if I did make that entry, I'm still trading against the daily downtrend and against the weekly downtrend, but I can feel it getting close. So I appreciate you watching. We'll see how the daily inside bars break tomorrow. If they break bullish, that increases the odds, in my opinion, that we will trade within the August range that we've been watching. And if it breaks bearish, then we could see a bear break this week. So thanks again. Do good things out there. We got the end of the video here today. There's nothing, but I'm going to post a link to a nice little short documentary that one of our members and one of my friends now has made. And I'll see you all tomorrow. Have a good rest of your day.